All right, so in this session, I want to talk about the Neturu uh, Atum and Nefertum. So both of them are principles of the divine son in a way. You can see um, both of them as the divine offspring of Ptah. But in their portrayals, you get a slightly different story, which I believe tells a full story. So a tomb is typically presented as the self-created um, divine offspring or creator God or creator nature in that uh, he created himself, has no origin, self-created, bears within himself the faculties necessary to create. Um, so even though presented as masculine, there is some level of androgyny here. Um, and in certain narratives, it, um, forgive the language, it says that he masturbated in order to uh, create life or create other Neturu. This is more so just uh, metaphorical verbiage to describe that he had all the faculties within himself necessary to create life, meaning that it didn't take a another entity or another principle that the fullness was within him so um this is a tomb or the first atom this is the fullness of god as well as the fullness of creation all housed within one body um i see this as the truth that mankind in itself is divine and connected to everything in creation yet mankind is ignorant of it. So I see this as the passive dominion and mastery that mankind walks in, where in truth, we bear the fullness of divinity and the fullness of creation bodily, that there isn't anything that exists that doesn't have some level of connectability with us, something that we can empathize with or sympathize with, because we're one with all. So I see the principle of Adam as as much as you can do while ignorant of this fact or ignorant of this truth. Uh, Nefertum um, is the enlightened one, the beautiful son. Uh, Nefer meaning beautiful. So you get the beautiful son. Well, what makes Nefertum so beautiful in comparison to a tomb? Well, this is a tomb whose blossom, that which is within him, is now outside of him. He's no longer passive. He's no longer asleep. He's fully awakened to the fact that, whoa, I have a mother and a father on the inside of me that lives there. I have a divine feminine and a divine masculine principle by which I can claim my origins to. These principles being pata and sekhmet, meaning that within me, I have all power. I can create, I can shape, I can heal, I can destroy. I, <laughs> I have all the faculties necessary, not just to conquer my life, but begin to uh, redeem the world, to restore creation. This is the enlightened, this is the enlightened one. Um, this is also, considering the uh, depictions with the lotus flower, as I said, this is the enlightened one. This is the archetype for where they would later get Buddha from. The enlightened one. The one whose lotus petals have blossomed. Um, he represents... He, he, he's, a, uh, he's connected to perfume and divine fragrances. This is all having to do with that um, lotus flower again. That divine ecstasy. So it's living in a state, not just where you yourself are in divine ecstasy, are in divine consciousness, but in a state where the world around you is now affected by this divine consciousness. A tomb is divine and is affecting the world around him to a certain degree, only in so much as he is conscious of it. A tomb is still asleep in his identity. He doesn't know his origins. This is God in ignorance, but Nefertum is fully awakened. Is fully awakened. He knows that he has a mother and a father that are not separate from him, that live within him, that he can connect with, and he is the fullness of. Saying that if you see me, you see the father. If you see me, you see the mother. This is the son when he's mature. 
This is the awakened son. <laughs> so, um, similar to my uh, session on Amen Ra and Ptah, I do have a PowerPoint presentation that you can access by either joining the Patreon or the Discord. Um, it's in the notes section, um, where I go a lot more in detail in on these particular uh, Necheru, um, drawing some comparisons and things like that. But that's it for this session. Um, until next time.